has been a Lake Mountain Sumer resident since 1986, and so most of you know Wyona. And Wyona certainly has been an active member of Kiwanis. She is a member of our Beaver Creek Historical Society board. I know she's very active in her church, so she's just one of those people totally involved. But she's probably best known for her pictures and for her knowledge of wildflowers. And so I know I have people ask me, what's this called, what this, I can't even remember Pansy. <laughs> the name of the wildflower, and so Wyoming's always been the go-to person for this, so it's wonderful to have her here to share her knowledge, and I'll let Wyoming give a little more information about her background if she'd like. So please welcome her to the chat. Darla. <laughs> I mean, it was just spectacular. 
I'm probably going to use that word a lot, so bear with me. Uh, I have just, uh, the, the air cooled copies are about the same size, but as you can see, they have a little bit of different configuration, and they're more of a, more of a vine that, that kind of grows on the ground as opposed to the bushes or poppies. And it's in the Caltrop family, and um, it's, it's not in the poppy family even. That's kind of strange. That's the way it goes. <laughs> and this is the claret cup cactus. Now, you probably won't see this too often, and I, I try to um, include some flowers that you might not see that are too, too, you know, that are kind of rare. And this one is not as prolific uh, as um, some of the other cactus in my area, but it is one of my favorites. It's just so spectacular. When I see one, I just get all excited. Um, <laughs> up there on um, the Sunset Point, there is a cactus one time, and Nancy and Matthew, I think, were with me that day, and it was literally a mound like this, and also called mound cactuses. And it, um, it had about 100 blossoms on it. And it's just unbelievable. So anyway, this is one of my favorites. And this is called Clifford. <coughs> and it's a bush, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty good sized bush at times. And where we found this one this year, I just took this one this year. It was on the road between here and Cornhill. And it was so covered with flowers, you couldn't even see the bush. And, and this is a, a close up. It's in the nose family. And, and they can smell, they can smell good. But it's, uh, it's also um, very protected. It's, it's not that it's so rare, it's just that it's protected. And when they did the um, um, highway between uh, Cottonwood and Sedona, uh, they were told to be very careful about how they uh, took out some of the clippers. So it's really spectacular that you can find one that's um,
real attractive looking <coughs> berries on them or, or seeds there. Just look like something fun to play with. So I just really discourage people from having them in their yards. Where are those usually located? No. <laughs> 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 I, I love to put Yeah, you see them all. Yeah, the side they're so
and uh, they do come in other shades of pink and red. Um, it's, it's one of the most popular, and if you really want to see a good display of them, if you go out towards Sedona and you take the Red Mountain Road, Red Canyon Road, goes off to the left, and just up the road, I don't know, about a mile, there's a whole uh, area just solid with these things this year. I, we just couldn't stop taking pictures. There were so many of them. And uh, they're always neat to see in the spring. Are they still blooming? No. Uh, no, they don't bloom very long. Uh, sometimes you see one <coughs> flower or one cactus and it's bigger than the cactus itself. Mm -hmm. But I have, in this one, has a lot of um, different blossoms on it. Okay. You recognize that Virginia? <laughs> yeah, that's my front yard. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia's yard this spring. We have gold, Mexican gold poppies. Now. And they came in all volunteer. I did not plant one of those. They oh, came in like wow. three years ago. Well, and this year they had just taken over everything. Well, nice. they were just in mass. They were, that yeah. was just incredible. I posted this on AfterMyArizona.com and I got a lot of really nice comments on it. I didn't get a photo of the day, but that's all right. But the, a lot of people really like that. <coughs> but the gold poppies, the Mexican gold poppies, are not the same as the California poppies. They're a little bit different. The California poppies are a little uh, lighter. They're, they're more yellow than orange, and they're taller. So that's the difference between them. most of the ones that we see here are the Mexican gold poppies. So and this one I took just the same day in Mickey's yard. They were really nice this year in the area. So they do grow here, but you know, it is the most photographed wildflower in Arizona. I mean, they, you know, down in the valley and the superstitions, I mean, when it's like this year, uh, you know, areas are just covered with them. It's just, they're being a spectacular, and that's the only word I can use for that. <laughs> so they're a little close up. Mickey's flowers. <laughs> well, this little guy, Mexican hat, I've got some on the table over here, and we pick those right over here, next, up, you know, next to the road, and they're blooming right now. And they're very showy. They're, you can tell them as soon as you see them, you know what they are, because they, they just, they just, they're just very distinctive. Isn't it against a lot of the pick <laughs> <laughs> Yellows, green, and orange, 
and lavender. They're all different colors, but they're, it's rare to see them in different colors. They're not flowers, they're what? Why are they they're, they're, they're bracts. The, the, uh, the flower petals, they're not petals, they're bracts. Uh, they grow up those stems and the flower petals. And they are a parasitic plant. They actually uh, grow from uh, another plant. They don't have a resident in their So, a bract is a part of the plant. Uh, anything that's up underneath, you know, they, they, they underneath the petals, and that's a bract, and it's just a part of the plant. And uh, most plants that you we're looking at have petals, but this one is not. So we're kind of in the plant. Now I know you've seen these around this year, especially we've had these. These are Palmer pinstemas. There are. Let me see. I've got to tell you how many. Oh, there are three dozen species of pin stemons in Arizona. Wow. So, when you see a flower that looks like a snap grain, that's that's a snap. That's a pin stemon. You can call it a pin stemon, and you'll be okay. But I have no way do I identify all the different kinds of pin stemons that I find. But this is one that's very recognizable because it's very tall and can get up like this and it has huge uh, pink flowers on it. And so um, we also call them the bloom flower. So it's, it's easy to identify. So here's another kind of a pin semen. It's a, a very bright fuchsia and then sometimes they're called their tongues. But uh, I mean it's still in the pin semen family of course. But there are just, there are purples, whites, yellows, reds. Um, just every color you can think of. So, and and uh, I mean, the company around here has just gone all over the place. So. I couldn't show each one of them. I did I, I did probably know this. It's going to be just a sampling of what we have around here. There are just so many uh, wildflowers around here. And the prickly pear cactus is one of my favorites to <laughs> photograph because it doesn't blow in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Also, it's a bulb. It comes from a bulb, and 
and it's, it's actually edible. And the Native Americans and the um, uh, pioneers actually have dug them up and used them like an onion in your, your stews and that kind of thing. So it's, it's edible. And also, this is called a desert mariposa lily. Now this, the first time I saw one of these, I thought I'd die beyond heaven. <laughs> and I just found that picture. I, 1978 was the first time I saw one of these. It was <coughs> up on Canyon Lake, up in the hills there. But you don't see these very often, but I wanted you to see it because it is in this uh, seagull lily family. And uh, if you see one, then you'll know what it is because it, it's really spectacular. Uh, where I found a really bunch of them was up by Dugas Road uh, a couple of uh, springs ago. My son and my daughter were out looking for wildflowers, and they were just all over the ground. I just had never seen any in mass like that. I usually see one at a time, you know, just it just it just knock me out. And then there's also the yellow one. It's called uh, also the desert lily, but you can see the center of that one better. Can any, everybody see that? It's just spectacular. It's just unbelievable. I just love these guys. Now this is a thistle. And now thistles, people don't usually like this it's because they're going to be considered a weed. But I love to photograph them. And, now, and this one that I got to be on it is one of my favorite pictures of all time. I mean, literally, the picture itself. I, I just love this picture because it just says something to me about nature and about how the bees just love the thistles they do. And thistles are all different colors. They're reds and pinks and whites and they're short and they're tall and they're thick and they're, they're, they're just very interesting plants as far as I'm concerned. Now this one is called antelope horns and it's in the milkweed family. And Nancy is the one that find, found this one for me. She goes back and forth to Cottonwood uh, on her way to work and she uh, on to this one, and we went zooming back over there when the thing was in bloom. And this, I just have to show you. Well, I wanted to show you what the bush looked like so you could recognize it if you just saw it by the side of the road. But look at this. That's one of the sweetest flowers by itself. And they're just so great. They're just great. Well, Ellen, was that right along the road on Cornville uh, Road? Yeah. I've, I've seen You've it. Seen but there's that. no place to pull off this. Just I this know. side of uh, Cornville, actually. Oh, well, I saw it. Yeah. I yeah. saw it closer to us, but it's right oh. on the side of the road. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Whoa. Well, I know we always have a hard time finding a place to pull over yeah. and they have to walk back. And uh, one place we found them this year was uh, on Page Springs Road, just before you get to the intersection of Page Springs and 89A. Yeah. And that section on the left hand side oh, was a virtual garden this year, and there were several of these this year. Mm. But this is something you don't see every day, but I just thought you might enjoy seeing something yeah. unusual. But uh, if you, when you do find it, you'll know what it is. And this is the uh, Blackfoot Daisies. Now these grow around <coughs> here prolifically, and I know you know what these are. They, they make nice little rounded bushes, and they come up first thing in the spring, and, uh, and Sedona is just spectacular when these things are blooming up next to the red, um, red, the red uh, brown. And this year they were just great. And I, I included this because it had a few other flowers in it too with the bladder pot and the recipe, <coughs> which all together they make a nice little garden. It's just like a garden out there. This was, where was it, uh, Coxcomb Trail? Yeah. Yeah, Coxcomb Trail up uh, out on uh, Dry Creek Road. And uh, some of the ground was just almost covered with the Blackfoot daisies this year. Just almost covered. Just like almost snow. And that's it. Okay. Yes, up by uh, Porter's Junction when I was coming home from Phoenix one time, it looked like I was driving along and I thought there was water out over there. It's blue on, on the on the right hand side there by Quartz Junction. Mm. Yes, I mean it was just like a, a lake up there. Water I saw that too, and it, I went like this. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> I did too. I thought those are flowers. Yeah, yeah, those were flowers. There had been a burn there, a fire, and when it and the fire that made uh, room for uh, just bushes and bushes and bushes of good ink verbena. 
That's what that was. Now we have those around here too. Birding, birding verbenia. That's what that is. And uh, we, uh, they're very popular around here. What were the big fields of yellow? Up and the there yellow, oh yeah. Yeah, that, the yeah, that that's yellow that you see on uh, Sunset Point, way up there on yeah. top, yeah. that's charlock. It's and it was just covered. It's yeah, it's yeah. just covered. I've taken pictures of those. Yeah, I tried to conclude mostly the ones that were in here in the Verde Valley, but I, I'll take questions about anything. I know one of the questions that I get asked the most is about the purple flowers that smell so good, that bloom in spring. Those are called pink windmills, and they are in the mustard family, and they smell really good at night during the, you know, when the sun goes down. And uh, I, I wanted to include a picture, and I did take one this year, but that particular bunch of pictures disappeared from my computer. And I'm really upset about that. I cannot imagine what happened. I've never had that happen before. And uh, maybe I'll still find it. <laughs> Another group of that I took from this year around uh, Apache, uh, Apache Trail and uh, Roosevelt Lake. The flowers were just mind-boggling. I call it sensory overload. That's all. I <laughs> and that whole section disappeared. That whole section of pictures. I got to do that again. But it won't, the, pic the flowers won't be like that next year, I'm sure. But pink windmills. Yeah, they they were just really 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 good this year. So, any other questions about flowers? Yes. When you're coming from um, Cottonwood, going towards Dirty, <coughs> and where they're doing a lot of the construction, they have those red and they grow pretty high, and they come up every spring? Yes. Those are eaten pin steaming. Yeah, and are then it's illegal to try to get some seeds? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? When I first moved here, uh, my husband and I built a house that was kind of on the edge of a cliff, and the, uh, the uh, bank that down there, we, we actually prepared it with uh, a watering system, and I made little, little holes in the ground, you know, and I, took and I, I, I harvested all the seeds that I could in our area, planted those seeds, not one of them came out. <laughs> not one. And I had, but I had 21 other flowers that did that I didn't plant. <laughs> that I don't have a green <laughs> But I, uh, I don't have a wife. And I have even tried to put them in pots and try to grow them seeds. And that didn't work either. So I just let them grow naturally. <laughs> Is it illegal to go out and pick the wildflowers along the road? What's that? Yes. Is it illegal to pick the wildflowers along the road? Well, I've been told that you're not supposed to pick them, but you know, you know, where I wouldn't really do it is when you're in a national park somewhere, state park, or something like that. I would end on somebody's property or you know, like that private land, I don't want to hurt anything. But, but uh, I, I do, I did pick them around our area, like I said, and got the seeds, and, and uh, I, I didn't feel bad about that. I was going to try to regrow them. Can you see some Any other questions? Maybe just tell me. Well, after you get through, you can come up and look at my books, and I have two huge scrapbooks here that I filled up with wildflowers and they're all cataloged, and there's a lot of actual <laughs> photographs in here that of some of the flowers we have, and many, many, many others that we didn't go through. So you're welcome to look at those if you like. And, uh, and if, if you have any other questions and you think about it, you, know, then you can always call me or email me or something, and I'll be glad to try to help you with it. So, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start putting together a uh, slideshow like this for the uh, uh, Arizona mountain flowers, and they are really, really nice. And so, one of these days, I, I, I've been asked to do several other organizations. I've been asked to do other slideshows. So that next one I do will be the mountain flowers. Are you going to do your own book someday? Or I, I have been planning that. That's why I did all this. But you know, getting around to doing it. In fact, some of the pages in here are the actual.
actual starting of it because um, one of the things that I found out by uh, trying to identify wildflowers is that there are very many that are similar, but they could even be in different families. And what I wanted to do was draw a picture of the flowers in their different parts. Where with a photograph, you can't always tell that sometimes it's just a difference in the leaf or just some little difference in, in the flower itself. And if you get that technical with it, um, sometimes a, f a drawing will show you the difference. And, I, I, and that's what I had planned to do. And of course, I, had, I would have to get it validated by someone who is an expert, because I am no, by no means an expert. I am totally self-taught with this whole thing. Um, so um, I don't know. I had planned to write a book. Uh, and, and because of what I wanted to do with it, nobody else has one like it. I looked in, uh, I've got 35 or 40 guidebooks. And the book that I want to write is, n is nothing like those. It would be a, what, how I learned to do this was writing it down, logging things in as I see them, where I find them, time of the year, and location, that whole thing. And um, so mine would be called an Arizona log, flower, Wildflower Log Book. But I would almost have to do it in sections, you know, like the Colorado River section, or the Verde Valley, or the mountain section, or whatever. Because there are so many. I mean, there are so yeah. many wildflowers out there. That she it draws is. good, too. Pardon? <laughs> Said she draws good, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's my story with my passion and so on. Thank you for letting me share this with you, and mm -hmm. I just uh, hope you can learn at least one name of one flower and learn and have a new friend. Thank you so much, Wayne. And we we have this videotaped, and Ron's always nice uh, to make CDs, so we have this on a CD, so we can even repeat it. Oh. If you're like me, you can't remember it one tenth of what you did. <laughs> so, uh, so we will have that. So thank you so much, Wyona. So here's the plan. We're going to have a board meeting for the Historical Society, and you certainly are welcome. And we'll have it in the room next door. But we won't do that for, um, let, let's say we'll do that at um, 9.50. Uh, so like in five or six minutes. And so um, if we, if the board members or people who want to attend that leave, that's fine. But Wyona, given her permission, she doesn't have to show up at the board meeting right away. If you want to talk with her privately or, or uh, have questions, um, please feel free to hang around. Okay, so thank you so much for attending. And we certainly have our membership forms back here. Run. And we, we have our raffle. Our interesting raffle. We're going to draw into that course. So check out our raffle. Thank you so much for coming.